I want to walk you through what I feel is the most effective isometric exercises for developing athletes. Let's get into it. Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Warner here with Overtime Athletes. And for today's video, what I wanted to be able to discuss is the three most effective isometric modalities or parameters that we utilize for developing our athletes here, whether it be their upper body power or lower body power and strength. So going from the top, when we stress isometrics in our first block, it's really about activation. Now the benefits of isometrics are widely known to be able to increase tendon stiffness, reduce compensation, and recruit maximal motor units. Now to elicit these responses, we're going to perform them throughout our entire program, whether that be through our plyometrics and power training or through our actual resistance training. So one of the first foundational movements that we perform is going to be what we call ISO extreme. Now we perform these at a deep push-up position, a deep squat position, a deep split squat position. The reason why they call those ISO extreme is just us paying homage to the gentleman, the coach that I learned them from, Jay Schroeder, when I trained with him in my time uh, out playing ball in Arizona. And essentially all that means is it's at a deeper range of motion. So we're at a fixed specific angle and we're trying to activate and turn on a specific set of muscles. So going right into the first one, let's say it's an ISO extreme split squat. So coach Jordan will go ahead and demonstrate. So Jordan, go ahead and get into a deep lunge position, deep split squat position. Now, the trick and the reason why we love these ISO extremes is not only that deep range of motion, but what's going on behind the scenes. So you might just look at it, it appears he's just fighting gravity, right? But in all reality, when a coach, or we're instructing him as a coach to do, is he's actually pulling with this front leg and pulling with the back leg, trying to bring his feet together. And that's activating the glutes on this side and the hip flexor on this side. Go ahead and pop up. So let's go ahead and say we were performing an iso extreme squat, right? If I wanna reinforce a movement pattern with an athlete, especially in the lower body, an iso extreme squat is great for teaching the athlete to be able to produce torque through the hip by externally rotating the femur. So let's say he was in an iso extreme squat, so go ahead and sit back. Good, now in this deep range of motion, it might look that he's just holding a squat position fighting gravity, but in all reality, he's actually screwing his feet into the ground, trying to push down and out, activating his hips, right? So this allows us from a foundational standpoint, especially when athletes enter an off season, for us to really reduce that compensation and be able to get the most out of that movement we want. Now, how do we progress this? Now, like I said, we can play with specific joint angles. So I can have the athlete either go ahead um, and go ahead and grab the dumbbells. So we're gonna go dumbbell iso split squat. So go ahead and go to a quarter squat, not extreme. So you could see that the angle has changed, bring your hips up slightly more. So the angle is slightly changed. This is gonna mimic a little bit more specific angle than to what he might use on comp in competition. We've added resistance, but he's still pulling the back leg back and the front leg forward. You can do the same thing with the squat. Go ahead and drop it down. You can do the same thing with the squat if you're performing it with a barbell. He could do the same thing with the dumbbell, but now we're reducing, right, that range of motion and we're getting and starting to mimic closer to what they're gonna utilize. So that's the progression there from those iso extremes. Second isometric modality that we really like to use are gonna be oscillatory isometrics. Now we usually follow these from those extremes. So think about we're turning on the muscle there. And then when it comes to the oscillatory, what it is is we're going and working another specific joint range, right? Spe very close to what they're gonna utilize on the field. And really what we're trying to do here is work that ability to relax and rapidly contract in that specific range, okay? So go ahead and grab the dumbbells. You'll see Coach Jordan, you could do this weighted and unweighted. We usually start with body weight and then progress to light resistance. Or if we're gonna load the spine, we can go a little bit heavier. But essentially what's gonna happen, he's gonna get into that same joint angle you just did, not deep, not deep. Good, right there. You can see the hip is slightly above the knee. Now from this position, instead of pulling, what I'm gonna have Jordan do is fight gravity by rapidly relaxing, sinking his hips as fast as he possibly can, give me about two, three inches down, and then rapidly try to pick yourself back up two, three inches. So you're gonna oscillate two to three inches in that range right there 
as rapidly as you possibly can. Ready, and go. Fast, 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 fast. And time, good. So I usually do this between five to 10 seconds and the entire goal, right? I tell athletes, I want you sinking faster than gravity will pull you down. What's that mean? I actually want you pulling yourself down rapidly and then I want you transitioning and popping back up quickly, right? And that's working through that specific joint range for your ability to be able to rapidly relax and rapidly contract those muscles. Those are another huge foundation to our program here when we're stressing isometrics. And then last but not least, number one way that I love to introduce isometrics when it comes to uh, resistance training is overcoming isometrics. Now, I used to be a fan of performing a normal isometric resisted, right? What's that mean? So let's say we're taking a back squat and we go ahead and sink into a back squat and then we hold that position at the bottom range for a set amount of time and then come out of it. And there's usually a rapid eccentric and concentric. The reason why I don't like to stress that enough, unless I have a very elite athlete who has great gym etiquette, is because when you're loading, right, and you're performing a normal isometric movement and you're pausing at that bottom range, what happens is, especially for instance, take that squat, all those intrinsic muscles in the spine tend to take that load more than us actually working through the hips of what we want to target. But if I can have the athlete perform an overcoming isometric, which is fighting an immovable force and put them in the specific range that I want to, I tend to see that I can elicit a better stimulus, a better response, right? To be able to get and really stress that isometric modality, which is gonna increase that tendon stiffness and increase motor unit recruitment. So with that said, going into that next one, we have our overcoming isometrics. One of the ones that I love for a lower body is gonna be a overcoming iso split squat. So just like he did with the dumbbells, go ahead and grab the bar. You could do this with a trap bar or you could do this with a barbell. So I'm gonna be in a fixed position. What that means is I can change the pin range here depending on Jordan's anthropometrics or his length or size. This is the exact one I wanna be in. I can have him push through the ball of the foot, raise the heel as if you wanna slide a card underneath, right? Now this joint angle from the hip to the knee to the ankle is exactly what you're gonna see when he's sprinting, accelerating, jumping. And now I can really train this by pulling against this immovable force for the amount of time that I want to. So he'll pull, go ahead and drive. And right now you can't see it, but he's fighting. So think about the amount of stress that's being caused to that right now. The amount of motor units as some primary turn off, other ones he has to call upon. Imagine the amount of tendon strength that's being strengthened as he goes through that and the stiffness. You can go ahead and relax. Other ones I like to perform is if we're doing like a push, you're driving against a movable force. If you're doing a pull, you're driving against an immovable force. All of those movements as opposed to just a normal hold the resistance and then come up. It takes a, a special type of focus and intent for an athlete to perform those. Here, what I can do is I can have the athletes focus on their effort, right? And their intensity of pulling against that. I can tell them to lift that rack off the wall. And what I notice is I can elicit a much better stimulus. So those are the three different isometrics that we love to be able to stress again to get that positive adaptation from that modality. I hope that helps and I'll catch you guys next time.